Bernard, what should South Africa be doing right now to support small businesses in order for them to survive this extraordinary environment? Yeah, Ron, Ron if, we, if we've got time, we should talk about government and big business. But let's start with what we can do as individual South Africans. You should almost go through your last week and think, where did you interact with a small business? And assume that unless we change our behavior dramatically, they will all be gone in a month or two months from now. So your Pilates teacher won't exist unless you find a way to continue to pay him or her and perhaps do it differently. Um, the person who comes to your house for whatever maintenance are going to go out of business unless we sort of think about this differently. Um, I honestly think our travel agents, I think our bed and breakfast uh, tourism industry are going to be dead. Okay, so we need to uh, look after the people, the small businesses in our lives, where we shop locally. We need to think about perhaps booking next year's holiday already now, because quite honestly, that operator, that bed and breakfast operator needs hope on the one hand and needs revenue right now. So all of us are going to have to think, what do we want to come out of in a month or two months from now? We can't really come out with only banks and big corporations existing. This is our individual contribution as South Africans that we need to make now. Bernard, in terms of restaurants, we're seeing pleas across the social media spectrum uh, many restaurant owners absolutely petrified that they are going to go out of business um, given the current status quo. Yeah, I do think this is where all of us have to come together. I think government should step in with some emergency packages. But we as South Africans can actually continue to order in. We can order takeaways. And we must remember to tip. Hundreds of thousands of South Africans depend on tipping as part of their income, their salary, if not most of it. And I think that's certainly something we can do uh, in our normal day-to-day -day life, even from our um, uh, uh, self-isolation. And what can government do to sustain small businesses during this period of absolute uncertainty and desperation when it comes to many small businesses not knowing where they are going to get their day-to-day -day income from? Yeah, I think we need a debt standstill. I think we need a dramatic reduction in interest rates. I mean, 1% will be disappointing, 1.5% will, um, I suppose, acceptable, but I am with the people who say we should see a 2% reduction in our rates later today. We should stop being fragmented. Every minister wants to announce a little intervention. The Minister of Small Business is going to announce a 1 billion rand intervention for all sorts of gimmicky things. Our crisis is much, much bigger than that. So government really needs to step up. We get told that we will uh, see a two rand uh, petrol price reduction next month. Why next month? Why not today? So I think we need urgency. I think we need uh, big, uh, significant interventions. And I think we need to make sure that no small business can be put out of business right now for 5,000 rand um, outstanding uh, uh, rent on an on a, on a office or so. So we will definitely have to uh, intervene. Big businesses must not only pay on time, they must actually pay early. Why don't you pay your small suppliers immediately? That cash flow flows straight into the economy. And then obviously helicopter money, as other economies are contemplating, if we put a thousand rand into every South African's pocket, that money will get spent and that will actually save our economy potentially. Now a thousand rand is nothing, we need more than that, but it may be a start. And what can big business do, Bernard, in the current environment to support small businesses so that the entire value chain survives? Well, certainly a lot more than what they are doing. I mean, right now, all the boards are meeting and everybody goes into self-preservation mode. Understandably so. I mean, there's even a fiduciary duty on directors to do that. But my appeal to these uh, companies is don't survive on your own. Don't come out on the other side in two or three months and you find that your whole ecosystem of suppliers have been completely killed off. This should be an opportunity for us to reinvent local suppliers, local procurement. Let's not import everything from China. But if we get this wrong, we will actually be in a worse position post this uh, as we were when we got into this a month ago. And uh, Bernard, just a final point on the uncertainty that prevails. We have no indication of timing, how long this could sustain. 
uh, surely, you know, a lot of your members are, are reaching out in desperation, saying, where is there any visibility? What is your response to them? Yeah, I uh, do think we will all have to uh, dig deep and find some hope. I don't think anybody can say this is over in two weeks from now. Quite honestly, I fear that uh, we may actually go straight into our autumn and winter, and we may have a three-month crisis, um, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't fight to survive. That doesn't mean that if we at South Africans pull together, we've seen such amazing leadership from our president for a change, dare I say, that it's now time for the rest of us as organized business, as labor, and as each individual to step up and to see what can we do. And we can do things. I mean, we can continue to pay our domestic service, even if though she's at home. We can pay our gardener. So many things we can do, and that's what we all will have to do. And then in three months from now, we will be better that we will uh, survive and we'll pick ourselves up and build an economy again. Bernard, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you.